YouTube changed my life around, and for the better. I mean, it might seem a bit dramatic, but it's true. Hear me out. I've uploaded my first video over 11 years ago, and it wasn't even in the same genre as the videos I'm doing now, but I already knew back then that this might be something that I will want to do. I just didn't have the necessary knowledge or the motivation to do it. I recently hit 1000 subscribers, but it might as well have been a million. At least it feels like that way. There were so many challenges and unexpected opportunities on the way that I just had to overcome just to continue my journey. And I know it's really easy to get lost in like this endless pursuit for doing something you like and making it into a profitable hobby slash job. But what tends to get lost sometimes is the passion for what you're doing when you're not getting these results. And in the end, some people even quit because of it. That's why you also have to see the bigger picture and celebrate the small milestones that come with it. I'm telling you that from my personal experience is that the experience that you're gonna get on this platform is literally the best thing you can do for yourself if you're an introverted person like myself and also kind of giving you some motivation if you want to start your own YouTube channel because it definitely is worth it. I'm not saying it's all rainbows and butterflies and that it's going to be easy, but starting a new channel shouldn't just be scary, it should be exciting. I want to tell you that I was struggling so that you know that if you start a channel, you will also be struggling with the same problems and you're not alone with it. Everybody starts the same way. Everything that we face as a creator towards building our channel, building our community, can be a real process and it can even be tedious at times. In the early days of your YouTube channel, nothing is really set up yet. You still have to learn how to create content first and foremost. And as you do that, you also need to discover your own niche, your own genre, and especially your own voice. And then navigate YouTube, which is not an easy platform to understand. Some people like myself have been at it for years, but we keep going with the purpose that someday one of our videos is gonna go viral and our community will grow. So the struggle isn't just the technical aspect of YouTube, it's the fact that we have to confront our doubts and fears about ourselves at the same time. Yet if you can push through all those barriers and then make a good piece of content, publish it, get views from strangers you've never met, online of course, that sense of achievement means everything to a content creator. The fact that I've been on YouTube for all these years, with many breaks in between because of real life getting in the way, and I have posted over 170 videos, people keep supporting me to make more. I feel like that's what keeps me going, and I feel proud of that. But the sense of pride you get really shouldn't come from the numbers, the subscribers, or even the views that you get. You should be proud that you learn something new. You should be proud that you are continuing to achieve self-improvement with everything you do and make. If you're just starting your YouTube journey and if it makes you feel better, having a smaller audience on YouTube isn't all that bad actually. It can put you into a unique position to play around a little bit. You know, like I don't really have a huge audience that relies on me, that expects me to make a certain type of content from me that a lot of big creators have. Sometimes they even struggle with it because sometimes the videos their audiences watch don't meet their expectations. And that's the great thing about being a new YouTuber. You can try to do whatever you want in the beginning. Embracing the freedom of just being a smaller channel allows you to make more mistakes and not being called out for it. You can use this time to kind of experiment and figure out what you want to do personally as a creator and what makes you feel fulfilled. So if you're still listening to my story, know that YouTube isn't just a place for creating content. As cheesy as it sounds, it can definitely be a place for personal growth and self-discovery. People think that YouTube is just for extroverts, for people who are good at talking to other people. But in reality, YouTube is a place for people who have something to share, their ideas, their ideals what they do in their free time and in their hobby or as a hobby. And for people who just might have something to say to the world. YouTube really challenges us to confront our fears or at the very least, it makes us do things we wouldn't normally do, like I'm doing right now. I normally upload videos about a game that I really love. 
but I suppose today I felt differently. Today I'm sitting alone in a room, talking to a camera, hopefully to be heard by people like yourself, or by another content creator wishing to be inspired. It's really weird though, with all the years talking to people online and in these videos, I didn't really think I would. As a kid, I was way more talkative to people around me than I am now. One of my teachers even said I was going to be a philosopher because I'm so good with words, but that never came to pass and I mostly focused on arts and music for hours on end. But as I went through my teenage years and got more familiar with the feelings of embarrassment, shame, rejection, I knew all of those things would eventually lead me up to talking to a group of people either on stage or in the street or like in this case in the form of a video. Sitting in this room alone, sometimes not alone, I have a wife sometimes, listening. <laughs> Staring at the lens and talking to it is a really intimidating experience, but it brings up some uncomfortable feelings for most people, I believe. But it really is born from the courage and the need to express yourself creatively and then put that out into the world. Growth on YouTube extends beyond just numbers of subscribers or the personal growth that you as an individual get for making these videos. What I've learned is that if you just sit through that discomfort or comfort, depending on your chair, you get rewarded with something invaluable. You take away so many actual skills like communication, storytelling, editing, lightning. There's so many things that so many people will never need to know. And you learn them on your journey by just making videos and improve each time. And on this journey, you are learning and gathering skills that could eventually end up being your career. There's a lot of people out there who need these skills. How to edit videos, making good scripts, making good thumbnails, or just come up with ideas and concepts. I mean, the opportunities are there if you just search for them. And these things can be paid a lot. There are plenty of channels out there that describe how much they've earned, with proof of their earnings on what they've learned on their YouTube journey. In the end, that's the kind of life-changing outcome that can happen if you commit to growing a YouTube channel long-term. YouTubers, most of us, are jacks of all trade. I mean, you need to understand how to physically use a camera, even if it's just your cell phone. You suddenly have to learn something like Photoshop to make good thumbnails. You even need to understand a lot about titles and marketing so you can effectively promote your content to the right people. If you're successful though, you can have a very tangible and financial reward at the end of this. And you can even make a whole career out of this as mentioned before. And I mean in more ways than just YouTube monetization itself. People make a lot of money from social media these days, but there's something special about YouTube itself. I know I'm going to be a bit subjective here, but let me paint the picture for you. On other platforms, such as TikTok or Instagram, it's really just about catching people's eyes as fast as you can. People are going to sit down and they're going to scroll through a video and videos, and maybe every so often they'll stop because that's what I do. They get a like 15 second laugh in and then they continue to just scroll on. And yeah, that's cool and all, but on YouTube, it's kind of a different game outside of YouTube shorts, of course. Everything that's on short form is based on trends, different trends for video styles, trending sounds, all of these things that you constantly need to be on top of. And if you're not, your content really isn't going to get pushed out. So many YouTubers, so many creators just complain blindly about the YouTube algorithm, but it's not the algorithm that's not doing the work for you. It's the content that you make that is currently up to trend if we're still talking about shorts. Long form videos though are a different story. I mean, YouTube is built to be a place where you can dive deep if you want to, like several hours deep, very long videos. You have that freedom here. If you enjoy painting, or making music, or trying to teach people how to fix things. Those all take a bit more time to showcase, right? YouTube has built a platform where you can get into your passions and actually take time to share an experience with people. Of course, longer videos take more time to make and 
the longer it takes for you to make a video, the more burnout you might feel straight after. But the truth is, on YouTube, there are so many successful creators that make videos maybe once a month or once every few months. But if you do that on another platform, what will happen to your channel if you decide to suddenly, I don't know, take a break for a week, a month? Probably nothing good. Short form content, live streams, certain type of content are only meant to be hot for like a moment in time and then they kind of slip away forever into the abyss. On YouTube, a long form video can be here to stay and they can get views for months or even years. And that is huge. Things might start off slow and you might not even get a ton of views right off the bat, but the algorithm is there to try and just keep people on the platform by finding more and more content they want to watch. And that's the beauty of it. Your content could just one day suddenly take off months after you upload it. And in some case, years after you've uploaded. That's the evergreen aspect that's pretty unique to YouTube. And it allows you to make a piece of content that can be valuable to people for a long time to come. Just create stuff that you love and enjoy and eventually just trust that it'll find the right people. I really would like you not to worry so much about the likes and the subs for every video you make. It could be difficult to ignore on times. I mean, I struggle with it too, all the time. But if you can just try to work past that and focus on making a good video after good video, things will change for you, for the better. Even if your channel doesn't blow up, there is no such thing as failing on YouTube. We all started somewhere. And the best thing about it is you have nothing to lose, but everything to gain. My whole YouTube journey has really led me to believe that there are endless choices for me and that I can create anything that I want. Anyway, I know this video was a bit different, but if you're a smaller channel looking to grow, or if you haven't even started one yet, I hope that this was inspiring enough to change your mentality and start now. Good luck and may the algorithm be with you.